Welcome to KP's Black Box. This is our initial launch uh, episode, and uh, I've got my trusty left hand, not left hand. Man, are you left-handed? Nope. Yeah, so I don't know where that came from. It's my old man brain working. Uh, this sleepy is, Joe. Sl- yeah, sleep, mm, sleepy <laughs> Joe. <laughs> uh, this is not a show about politics, but Zach just made it about politics. This is uh, my trusty audio technician Zach Stein usually he'll be behind the camera today I had him out so it wouldn't be so awkward for me to just talk to the camera without someone being there so Zach thanks for being on my show today and you're welcome this wouldn't happen without (laughs) Zach and then those guys can you move that camera to show those guys back there uh uh, I'm getting it now probably not okay from my peer just take my word for it there's some other people Behind the camera over here, uh, Mr. Ian Miller, who Maybe I can also... Hold a, I can hold a mirror. Hold a, yeah, let's do that next time. <laughs> um, Ian Seconds has my son-in-law. And then my right-hand man in my financial business who helps keep me on track, Mr. Noah Baker, who's over there. You can't see him, but trust me, they're back there doing Zach's job, which most of the time in our financial firm, everyone's doing Zach's job. Mm. Um, hmm. So that's how I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> doing your work for you, right? That's right. Okay. Um, but usually one of the things that we had talked about doing when we start started out our uh, thought of the podcast and what we'd be doing and kind of our theme, um, I'm a prior Marine and I'll tell you more about that story one day. Zach, don't ask me questions about that today. We don't have time. <laughs> okay. Um, but one of the things I, I said we wanted to do was pay tribute to our men and women in uniform, especially our military. Um, It's through the lineage of my family. We have Air Force, Marines, Semper Fi, the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard. My oldest son is a Coastie. My youngest son is serving in the Army now. I'm in the Army of God. And Zach's in the Army of God, (laughs) and uh, I'm I'm there with him. He's, He's a lieutenant. I'm a general. Um, so anyways, um, (laughs) one of the things we like to do is toast our military at the beginning of our podcast. And so for all our troops, sailors, Marines, puddle jumpers, AKA Coasties, just kidding. (laughs) Uh, and our airmen toast. Do we cheers? No, that's too far. It's too far. We got to figure out a way to click glasses here. Uh, this is going to be the worst opening episode ever, right? No, it's radical transparency. Radical transparency, <laughs> radical truth. We'll talk about that later. Um, but a toast to our military. I say we seriousness. go for it. We go for the clink. Uh, come on. There we go. Ian, you got that? Got it. Awesome. So down the hatches, Zach. Cheers. Whew. Blue label. Delicious. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Walker, Blue Label, get on the train, help out our military, give back, because those guys drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously. You look like you're tearing up a little bit. Oh, God, yeah, man. <laughs> that was rough. Let me expose you. But I, I love, thank you. Yep. How was it for you? Uh, Good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Folks, I promise. Our podcasts are much better than this. The guests are much more exciting. The host does a much better job than what I'm doing right now on my initial podcast. So stick with us. (laughs) It will get better. (laughs) I promise. Yeah. We'll have some DJ horn. We'll have a little bit of that going on, which is kind of like Zach's love life right now. You got any... uh you got any Mike Tyson buttons? I'm going to tee that one up for you. I might just have a Mike Tyson button. (laughs) Hydrogen bombs. Hydrogen bombs. <laughs> Mike, you're, that was not me poking fun of your list. Yeah, we're going to have to edit that out because he's, <laughs> he's fighting again now. So At 50 years old. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I regret my statement, Mike. 
Yeah. I take it back. <laughs> Own air apology to Mr. Mike Tyson. Oh, I got my statement. <laughs> <laughs> He is in so much trouble. Uh, so it, in all seriousness, we, we just went through about four minutes of nonsense. Hmm. Um, that's how fast you can burn time on a podcast and just have some commentary about nothing. Yep. Absolutely nothing. And people will listen to it, hopefully. Um, but our podcast, in all seriousness, um, Zach, we want to talk to people about all things – Oxygen and money and everything in between. Which is a lot. It is. It covers a lot. And, you know, my expertise is that as a uh, financial professional advisor. And, you know, working with my clients over the years in the financial services industry, I've had the amazing opportunity to meet people from all walks of life, from Mm. Grammy winning music producers and engineers to. Um, uber wealthy business people to in between just the ordinary um, pre-retiree, retiree business owner. Yeah. And what I've found is that these people are so much alike, even though we're all different and we come from different walks of life. Um, th- these people have a lot of things in common. The two most important things they have in common, what do you think that is? Money. And oxygen. Money and oxygen. What I've found is that... Did I get it? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't live without either one of those. And so what we want to do is dive deep in KP's black box and find out from these ordinary people who have done extraordinary things, what makes them tick? Yeah. What, what makes them want to breathe another breath of oxygen each day? What makes them drive, not necessarily for the, the value of money or what money uh, looks like in their bank account, but what it really can do for them in their life's work. And, you know, I'm going to be really transparent here. We've shot a lot of these episodes already Yep. in advance. And what's really cool is being able to have these conversations with folks um, that, man, I, I really gained some massive insight from some of our guests and, you know, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the folks we're going to be talking to? Yeah. Uh, so some of the episodes we've recorded already, I won't name drop yet, but we've uh, interviewed or conversed with a nutritionist, um, with a, an ancient fossil from the, the insurance industry. We've talked <laughs> to... you that you yeah, call him a fossil. We've talked he to really is. A, a self-made guy, an entrepreneur who has close to 1,500 employees at this point. Um, you know, he's, he's pretty far up the financial food chain, so to say. He was a Naval Academy graduate. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, turned entrepreneur. Yeah, lots of wonderful uh, accolades. I that think guy thought word. he was going to be in the music business. Yeah. And that's that's really where he thought he was going to have his career after his, his Naval uh, career. Yeah. And his opportunity with what the Naval Academy uh uh, brought for him. Yeah, and we've we've gotten the chance to talk with people in the music industry, um, producers, and yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a that's a great segue. What who are the who are the people that you would like to have on the show, Kenny? So in the future, you know, we're going to have um, like what s- defines that person? Yeah, uh, I think we want to have conversations uh, with entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you've maybe heard the word out there, serial entrepreneurs, those people who just have this driving passion, um, to have change and innovation in <laughs> to the world sell cereal, in. Huh. to What's sell that? cereal, just, yeah, cer- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Captain Crunch, Fruit Loops, cereal entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. But we need a but button. Uh, it was, um, does that get on that? I don't know what that button is. It's gone now. Oh, you got thank a hand you. clap. Thank yeah, you. That was great, Zach. I'm here all night. Never um, again. So, or if it was my side of the room, <laughs> yeah, you get a little weak boo from the audience there. You know, I actually recorded those. Doing the boos? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, our audience, it, it's going to be a very, very diverse group of people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to find that the people that we interview... Uh, we'll have some pretty unique stories. One that I'm really looking forward to, to sharing with everyone is uh, a client of mine whose father served um, with the U.S. Navy 
and flew uh, fighter jets off the forestall wow. uh, during the Vietnam War. And this gentleman was actually on the forestall um, when it caught fire. Is that a ship? It's, a sh- it's an aircraft okay. carrier. Yeah, thanks. Wow. Uh, yeah, it is an aircraft carrier. To everyone of- watching, I'm 13 years old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 not far from it. Right? Uh, I mean, uh, what did you say? What did you say, Ian? He's, he's not 13. He's drinking. Yeah, yeah they, they carded yeah. me. <laughs> Johnny Walker, he really is 21. I showed them my library Things card. going to get us in so much trouble. <laughs> but, you know, there's some stories where this gentleman, um, I, I had an opportunity about three years ago in his home in Kentucky to sit down and have a conversation with him um, uh, about what it was like being on that, that aircraft carrier that day when – a massive explosion took place. A lot of men lost their lives, um, and, and and it w- it made world news at that time. Um, at a period in time where it wasn't really popular to be uh, a uh, service member hmm. in the military, but um, you know these young men were willing to serve. They were willing to um, go out and carry out the orders of our nation's leaders, even though they may have not agreed with everything that was happening then yeah they had this uh honor respect and call of duty uh to follow through uh on their nation's um uh obligations yeah and uh it's a i don't want to give it away today but it's it was a tearjerker for me just sitting in his living room um one showing me the pictures inside of time magazine of and then having a person relive for you um, the emotion of that day. Um, it, it's it's wow. an amazing story that I want to capture on film for his grandchildren. Um, and, and so that's some of the things we want to do is we want to, we want to just have the opportunity to deep dive some of these stories and go kind of behind the scenes of not only things about finance, but things that makes people tick. What, what makes people do the things they do in their life? What makes them choose the journey or the path that uh, they're on? Yeah. Even to, um, you know, if I were to answer the question myself, um, I think that there are lots of interest groups and subsequently there's lots of podcasts focused on interest groups. There's finance podcasts, there's crime solving podcasts, there's music podcasts. Um, And people love these things. But I think it's a. I think the principle is true that the thing that makes life meaningful and makes interest groups meaningful, and makes hobbies meaningful, is people. Yeah. And while we may not be an interest-based podcast where we're not focusing on just finance, we're not focusing on just music, just the entertainment industry, um, we're focusing on people. Yeah. Which I think is the beautiful thing, because um, people are what bring meaning to those things. So I think that you encapsulated it perfectly in the story yeah. you just told. Well, that's the cool thing about, you know, for me, being in the financial services industry for almost 27 years now, what's kept me in that industry is not necessarily the love of finance, but it's the love of people and yeah. being able to just have that opportunity to share with people my expertise and how I can help them move from where they are to where they want to be in their financial realm. But I also get the opportunity to hear their stories. And, and hear how their money decisions helps drive the passions that they have uh, in their life's work and whatever that may be. That shows. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And, you know, you're part of that, too. You, mm-hmm. you know, you have a passion for music. And one of my things that I want to do with all of my employees uh, is champion the desires of a person's heart. Yeah. And help them achieve what it is they really want to achieve. And, you know, that's one of the things I heard about Google years ago really is that google um and you can fact check me on this and and if i'm wrong i'll I'll (laughs) restate it (laughs) i'm sure you will zach (laughs) but i think google if i read this right gives back about 20 percent of their employees time for them to be able to research um something that they're passionate about so they give them free date basically if you have a five-day work week they're saying hey one day a week you can take a personal day to to work on uh, your passion to work on something that maybe could give back to the greater cause of wow. of, of the world that we live in. So, Google, if that's not right, I'm sure you will shut me down and <laughs> not allow me to 
um, put that out there. Nah. But that's uh, Google. No one's Google listening Schmoogle. on Google Play. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, nobody fact checks anymore anyway. So. Oh, God. Hey, go get me an application for Google. <laughs> 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 Every industry except music, they won't let you do it in the music. No. So, um, but you know, on that that front, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from uh, Zach and one of my buddies that goes back twenty years. Hmm. Uh, there's a podcast we shot uh, a week or so ago uh, with a buddy of mine from the music industry, um, and taking uh, kind of the the old dog in the game and then the new cat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, finding a way to find what's those common goals, those common themes. Um, and then we actually found out when during this interview that you're going to be able to maybe collab on a, yeah. on a song or two. And who knows where, where that'll go. Yeah. Um, We're already seeing the, the fruit of the podcast, I'd yeah. say. We haven't it, even launched that, it yet. Isn't that cool? Um, and so really understanding in this concept in the world that we live in is uh, from, a, from a money principle uh, from a values point of view, that when a person plants a seed, um, most of us want to jump right to the harvest and jump right to, you know, we plant the seed, let's immediately get a harvest from it. Um, and where I want to spend some time in our podcast is that cultivation process. You know, in farming, you have to seed, then you have to cultivate that soil. Hmm in order to get a fruitful harvest. Yeah. And so the podcast hopefully will show folks the cultivation process. What did it take from the seed of the idea, the seed of uh, the, the first deposit, uh, the seed of the commitment of signing a contract to join our nation's military, um, which is another part of folks that we're going to talk to. Yeah. Um, where our podcast is shot from, we're, we're uh, in the community of Virginia Beach, Virginia. And in this community, we have a lot of uh, people in the Naval Special Warfare community um, who serve in that world. So I'm going to have a few guests uh, that after they've served, um, be able to come back and share some of their stories with us. So Yeah, this theme you're talking about of, of sowing seed, preparing soil, reaping a harvest... It reminded me, tell me about, because I, I actually don't think I've ever heard this story. Take me back to the day Kenny Porter was sitting on his couch or wherever you were, and you thought to yourself, I want to make black box publishing a thing. Because I think what most people don't understand is this concept of black box is actually a really grandiose vision Yeah, that is a lot bigger than just a podcast. Yeah, And right now we're actually sowing the seed you know, recording this pilot episode of a podcast, we're sowing the seed for what black box will and people be. People are like, Oh my God, this yeah. is Rocky soil. You're pretty <laughs> <Okay. soon." laughs> But tell, me, tell me about it. So Can you tell that story briefly? Yeah. So how brief would you like it? Uh, that's your podcast. We, we've got, yeah, we've got 13 minutes. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it really starts back to around 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd written a, a book called the billionaire within, and that book came from, uh, some, trials and tribulations that really allowed me in my, my own personal life to be able to stop mm. and be introspective about what had happened in the first uh, 15 years of my professional career. Um, and some decisions that I had made back then really led me to this point of 2012 where I'm like, oh, I've for the first time had a taste of failure. Mm. And failure in a way that it was probably um, one of the most defining moments in my life, I would say, uh, other than my time in the Marine Corps, which I'll talk about that one day. Yeah. But, you know, from this, um, from this moment of experiencing, um, in some people's eyes, it would be catastrophic failure. You know, I had this uh, thing that happened in my life, lost a business. Um, it would be defined as losing everything. Mm. And, uh, you know, from that, having uh, really nothing to work from other than supportive family and support of my wife and support of children who love me dearly, um, realizing that, you know, it was, it was really an audacious statement to say that I'd lost everything when I'd really just lost some material goods. Mm. Um, and, and what I still had was a massive opportunity in front of me. 
And what, what it really took was discovering kind of my own black box and discovering my own um, value that was not defined by a dollar amount. And that's where I came up with this title for this book, mm. The Billionaire Within, is that I had to realize that within me was a billionaire. And the guy who realized that was a guy with no money. Was a guy with no, (laughs) right. Yeah, a guy who was flat broke again, who had lost everything financially. and Still had oxygen. Still had oxygen. Yeah. But was living a day without some money. Mm -hmm. But I had the support of family and had the support of my wife and had the support of my children. And without that, there would have been no need for oxygen. Mm -hmm. Right. And with, you know, I I have to take it to a spiritual realm realm too. And say, yeah, that was really my, my faith and my faith in Christ that, um, I had to go back to that and go, man, I am really just this, if you could visualize a a guy standing in the middle of the room, just naked. I know Mm -hmm. that's a scary picture for you, Zach, to think of me naked. Well, it gets the, it gets the point across. It's uncomfortable. Um, you are completely exposed and you got nothing to offer the world. Mm-hmm. At least that was the the gray matter. That was the the head trash, and being able to get to a point where uh, I would walk out on my father in law and mother in law's deck, this two hundred foot deck mm-hmm. that was built for my fifty foot yacht that I no longer had. Wow, I didn't know that. Lost it. Yeah, lost that. Lost a big house. Lost a wet lease on an airplane, and all this fancy stuff that people would identify as value was now valueless. Yeah. It was gone. And, you know, having that reconcile within myself, this idea of black box came along of going, well, let's dig down deep to figure out the whole story, to figure out, well, what happened um, for that to take place? And how do we not let that happen again? And how do we learn from those experiences of the bad things that happen in life? And I'll, I'll give you this illustration. Um, I'm a big fan of chocolate chip cookies. Mm, likewise. <laughs> so my wife, Kathleen, and my daughter, Sarah, um, arguably make the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. And one day, mm. maybe we'll have them on. We'll give that recipe to the just world. just this morning. <laughs> Delicious, right? Yeah, they're pretty Amazing. Pretty stinking Oda Spunkmeyer, sorry. <laughs> they don't have anything on Sarah and Kathleen's chocolate chip cookies. But one of the one of the key ingredients to chocolate chip cookies, most people would think, oh, chocolate chips. Hmm. But it's actually salt. Salt alone, uh, excuse my French, tastes like shit. I mean, it, it's <laughs> yeah. you know when you when you think of taking a teaspoon of salt and just throwing it in your mouth. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of get or drinking little, salt water. To yeah. Like, Insight throwing up or something, right? Yeah, um, not not a good ingredient by it's itself. <laughs> and, and salt for me is a, a little bit like failure. Mm. Uh, you got to have this ingredient standing alone by itself in a vacuum. Um, isn't that great? But man, when you add salt to anything from your favorite steak uh, to your favorite vegetable, or even in those delicious chocolate chip cookies. That little tart, uh, weird tasting ingredient, when added to the rest of the symphony of ingredients inside a chocolate mm. chip cookie. There's a word. Yeah. Symphony. For a music guy. I mm. said that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I received it. <laughs> um, now you have an amazing recipe. You have an amazing taste that carries on and gives you a memory, like the memory of those chocolate chip cookies that Kat and mm-hmm. Sarah make now. Just, uh, I'm going to have to ask them to make some again tonight because you probably ate what was left over in our house, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I ate best one. And now there's yeah. going to be like a longing from all the viewers of this podcast to taste these cookies you know what? and they just can't. That now, in the future episodes, we're going to have to have some chocolate chip cookies and maybe, oh, maybe set some salt out on the table yeah. as a reminder that you got to have some failure. And we can... Throw it over the shoulder. Yeah. So, you know, in these interviews where we've talked with folks about their life and their life's journey, um, I think every person that we've interviewed thus far has had either on camera or off camera where we've been able to have a conversation about, um, well, tell me some of the the, the downside. Hmm. Tell me some of the, the critical moments where 
you you had the Q word come up, quit. Mm. And, you, you know, I think that's what we want to dig deep into is finding out what, what drives you, what makes you go beyond tapping out. And, uh, you know, for me, that's where Black Box came from. And you, you probably wanted a 15-second answer, and I, I've used about eight minutes telling you that. I'd, but I, I don't want to give it all away because there's a story I want to share with that one day yep. about the journey that I went through. Um, and we'll put my, my book out there for people to read. Chapter one, chapter two kind of goes through uh, the early journey where I had to get the head trash right, where I had to get my mind right um, to have success again. And until my mind was ready for that success, it didn't matter how much money you could make. It didn't matter what you could do with the money. The mind had to be right. Yep. And, you know, one of the things you, you were prepared to ask me today, I'll just go ahead and say it now for the sake of time. There's a book here on the table written by one of my mentors that I've never met personally, but done tons of training with him as Mr. Jack Canfield. And he wrote a book uh, years ago that's still popular today, and I would suggest every person take uh, a month to read. What's his name? Jack Canfield, The Success Principles. Um, It's one of the best books for really preparing your mind for whatever journey you're you're going to partake on or enter into, Um, whether it be in business, whether it be in music, Mm -hmm. um, or a military career. It's really getting your your mind ready um, for the journey that you're you're on, um, whether it be uh, a personal one, a personal goal, or maybe a, a group goal. Um, it, it's one of my my favorite all time business books that I think you know reaches beyond yeah um, that of business. And the other one here on the table is um, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, I would say probably my next all-time favorite book next to uh, the Scripture itself, the, the, the Bible. <laughs> i, I got to put the Bible at the top of the list, obviously. But, yeah. Um, it's the bestseller. The bestseller. <laughs> bestseller. In history. <laughs> and, and there's a lot we can glean from that yeah. uh, at so many levels that we'll, we'll have um, one of the interesting people we'll have on a podcast uh, in the future is our, our pastor of my church a guy named clayton ritter and I'll, oh, yeah. I'll name drop him now that'll be awesome uh we we've teased in another forecast about having him on forecast podcast forecasting the podcast there you go. <laughs> um Boom. Yeah. Oh, that's it. yeah yeah there we go <laughs> um but you know clayton was a uh, a basketball star yeah um, in his own mind <laughs> um no he actually got to play with the lakers on paper uh, on paper um <laughs> for a few weeks and so we'll get to hear that life's journey and of how did you, how did you go from a really talented basketball player to to pastor so um it, it's more than just about the success of of businessmen it's the success of life's journey and understanding that sometimes there's a little salt in the wound sometimes there's things that just don't go your way and um how do you continue to fight through or have uh the intestinal fortitude. I know you love that word, <laughs> that phrase. Um, to uh, to continue, and that's that's the people I want to talk to on my podcast. Yeah, yeah. There's actually there's a cool imagery. I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'll be brief. But I thought of this when you were talking. That's why I started writing. I don't know if you were intentional with this, but the image of a black box when a plane goes down, it's what they look at to determine what the cause of the crash was, the cause of the mishap. Um, They look at it for information about the plane, the instruments inside. And it's almost like when you were on that dock at your in-laws, you had crashed metaphorically in life and you found your own black box. Yeah. And you found what was inside of you that was driving you. And it's almost like we're wanting to dive into our guests and say, what's in your black box? Yeah. Let's learn about you. What drives you? Let's learn about um, the instruments inside of you. Succinct. I, I yeah. think you're spot on with that, and you know that's um, a, that's a great segue to you know closing this out today. Yep. Um, that if you want to hear more about uh, a person's internal black box, yeah. Um, stay tuned and listen and watch episodes, and please 
if you enjoy this, share it with your friends. Yeah. Uh, subscribe, I think, is the thing you're supposed to do if you, if you like a podcast, right? <laughs> Drop a comment, hit the like button. What Smash is it? that subscribe button. Smash the subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> hit the blue button, make it yeah. green. So that's why I have Zach here to help me with all these new generational yeah. things that I am <laughs> so not up on. But, you know, one of those success principles is to surround yourself with people smarter than you mm. uh, who have... Uh, capabilities that you do not have and cheerlead that. And so this is a guy, cheerlead those guys back there, uh, the rest of my team who works in our our financial firm from my daughter to my future Mm -hmm. daughter-in-law, the independent guys who work with me in the the financial practice that we have, which shout out to Kenneth Porter and company, one of our sponsors. (laughs) Yeah, that's important. Um, Yeah, that's important. Thank you. Uh, Our future sponsor, this is Believing As If, uh, blue label. We're speaking it in faith. Uh, we are, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the nation's military. And is this, this backwards on camera? It probably is, but it's okay. Blue label, Johnny Walker, top shelf blue label. It's label. Uh, Ooh. Miller house coffee, which is my son and daughter, daughter-in-law. They're acting on a dream that they have hmm. and they're acting as if, and the coffee really is good. Yeah, you actually, give it a I brewed at home now. It's my favorite, my favorite coffee. They made a special blend for Kenneth Porter and Company uh, called Morning Call. And <laughs> don't let your head trash get in the way of what Morning Call means. Well, it's much better than my original idea, the billionaire <laughs> blend. The billionaire blend. Yeah, <laughs> when they came up with the Morning Call, I was like, all right, that's better than mine. <laughs> it, it, it's a play off the stock market, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the opening bell. And that was one of the things that we were thought, Dang, thinking about. that would have been good, too. Opening bell, closing bell. Closing bell would have to be decaf, though. Yeah, some like, uh, what's the, like herbal tea. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But morning call, you know, some of you potty brains out there think, oh, it'll get you ready for your first morning constitution. Oh. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah so. A literal potty brain. Oh. Uh, what is the delay on our pad here? I, I hit the would, button. Yeah, that would be MIDI, which MIDI. is a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother podcast for mm-hmm. all the music guys. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going down a rabbit trail. Don't mean to do that, <laughs> but stay tuned. Uh, this is our initial episode. Most of our episodes in true transparency are going to be about an hour long. Um, because we do want to get into the details of a person's black box. It never feels long enough. It really doesn't. And and I feel for uh, for Joe Rogan, who can do three and four hour podcasts on the high, does it? Yeah. But I love listening to him. Yeah. It takes me like two weeks to get through them, but it's, I do love them. Hey, you know what? It's cool though. Shout out to Joe. Maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe he can be a guest on our show if he's that lucky. That would be awesome. <laughs> Spotify, get him on our show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> put our people together. Um, My but, people will talk to your people. Yeah. There you go. Zach, call Joe. See if he can help us out with that. Hey, hey Siri, call him. All right. Call Josh, maybe. All right. So, hey, in all seriousness, thanks for joining us today. We'll look forward to having you in future episodes. Uh, please, uh, what is it, Zach? Click the button. Oh, what I are all the things? I started to talking to Siri, and now the HomePod in the room so started talking. the HomePod in our yeah. studio is talking now. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure on whatever platform you're listening on, you subscribe slash follow us. Is it going to be the best way to find updates about our show? We're going to be releasing weekly. That's the plan. Yeah, every Friday. Um, yep. If you're interested in sponsoring slash endorsing the show, please reach out to our team at support at blackboxgrp.com um, and follow our social media pages. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, we would love to connect with you. Awesome. Well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys soon. 